Our top story this hour comes from Japan as Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga is set to become the country's next Prime Minister as well as the President of Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party. Suga, who is the outgoing Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's close aide, is set to win the LDP leadership election, which is currently underway. The party is currently headed by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and the victory will virtually ensure that Suga will also replace Abe as the Prime Minister of Japan. The ruling LDP will vote to pick the next Prime Minister on Wednesday. 71-year-old Suga is expected to serve as a Prime Minister till 2021, when the next general elections will be held. Suga is likely to continue Abe's policies in Japan. Considered more of a behind-the-scenes operator than a frontline leader, Suga recently enhanced his public image by unveiling Japan's new imperial era called Reiwa. Suga, who was born to a family of strawberry farmers, began his political career as a local assemblyman. There are two more candidates in the race, even as Suga remains the strongest contender. Fumi Okishida, who served as a foreign minister under Abe, is also considered to be a close aid of the outgoing prime minister. However, Kishida was met with criticism over his unsuccessful proposals to tackle COVID-19. Former Defence Minister Shigeru Ishiba is also in the race. Unlike other candidates, Ishiba has distanced himself from Abe's policies. Shinzo Abe, who is Japan's longest-serving Prime Minister, announced his resignation last month over health issues. Now, to give us more details on this story, we are being joined by Grace Lee from Tokyo. A very warm welcome to you, Grace. Thanks for joining us. Now, Suga is all set to most likely be the next Prime Minister, and he's being perceived as what is called a good continuity candidate, someone who will continue the Abe government without Abe. So tell us more about the veteran politician. Yeah, so uh, the vote is happening right now. If things go as planned, Suga will become the next prime minister of Japan. He has the backings of all the major uh, factions within the LDP. And because the LDP doesn't have any real uh, opposition, you know, it holds the majority of the House of Representatives here. So it seems that he will become the next leader on Wednesday. Now, there are a lot of hurdles for Suga uh, when and if he does become the prime minister mainly fighting COVID-19 will be his priority. Right. Uh, of course, the Olympics that's supposed to be held next year will be another big priority for him. Uh, all in all, it does seem like the election part isn't the hard part for Suga. It's what lies ahead. Absolutely. Now, there are a few other contenders as well. Shigeru Ishiba and Fumio Kishida, both of whom bring plenty of experience to the table. But what makes Suga stand apart? Uh, well, Suga has, uh, is the right-hand man of Abe, and he's promised to follow through with Abe's policies if elected. He does seem to be the safe choice for the Japanese people at this moment, and that's been primarily very attractive for the LDP. Uh, they don't want any internal turmoil. They don't want a messy handover. So having Suga as the leader will ensure that they kind of follow through with the policies that Abe has laid out so far. Uh, and that means not a lot of political riffraff in the midst of this pandemic, which is what uh, the people here want as well. So there are rumors that perhaps uh, Suga might call a snap election because his popularity has skyrocketed mm -hmm. since he announced his candidacy for prime minister. Uh, you know, he, another contender was the top choice for the public just a few weeks ago, but now his popularity is in a good place. He might want to prioritize that first. Right. So tell us a little bit about the impact of a new prime minister on Japan's economy at this time, as well as the ripple effects of the same. Now, this leadership transition is, of course, coming at a time when the Japanese economy has recorded its biggest slump on record due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And Shinzo Abe had a project of kick-starting the economy, something that was, in fact, dubbed Abenomics. So where does all that stand now? No. Well, the gains from Abenomics, which was relatively successful, have been pretty much wiped out due to the pandemic. And that's kind of a very difficult situation for Abe, who has continuously pointed to Abenomics as his success. Uh, he hasn't been able to deliver on a lot of his key policy promises so far, such as bringing back abductees from North Korea, such as uh, solving the, the territorial dispute with Russia, or uh, the reform on uh, Japan's pacifist constitution. So uh, that has been not very good news for him. Uh, so 
Suga will inherit that if he becomes prime minister as well. The same kind of woes coming in uh, with the pandemic trampling the economy, uh, seeing the worst contraction since World War II. Uh, a lot of businesses here, particularly small businesses, have been hit hard by the pandemic. And they are looking to Suga to kind of make bolder policies, make mm -hmm. sure that there's some kind of economic reform so that uh, they can make gains in the next few months. Uh, the Olympics is another high priority as well. A lot of business owners hoping that the Olympics can pull through so that uh, they can see a small boost from that in the meanwhile. Right. All right, Grace, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And for all your insights into the story, we will, of course, be watching the election results closely.